Returning now to the story on swine flu, and the number of Australian cases has risen to 51, and health authorities say the amount of infections is expected to increase. Federal Health Minister Nicola Roxon joins us now from Canberra to talk about the situation. Minister, good morning and thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure. First of all, are the number of cases, as you understand it, is the figure still at 51? Yeah, look, actually, the confirmed cases are at 50, but I do expect that there will be other announcements by jurisdictions during the course of the day. And I think now we're moving into this new phase. Unfortunately, we can expect there to be a fair jump in the next couple of days uh, because we see these clusters of swine flu. We know that we then uh, test the contacts, try to make sure that uh, we contain the disease within a particular group of people when we've got some confirmed cases. But the patterns overseas do show us that we're probably likely to have some significant increases in the next few days. Our challenge is then to be able to hold that uh, at a level and try to ensure that this doesn't get a community-wide um, hold on all of the community. That, that's going to be a challenge for us, but that's the aim and where we're putting our effort now. What are you being told uh, about the severity of this virus and the infections? We have 50, almost 51 confirmed. We know it's infectious, but how bad is it when you get it? Uh, it certainly is very infectious. It seems that uh, most of the cases in Australia have been uh, very mild or, or quite mild. I see that there are some reports in the media from uh, at least a couple of people who've got confirmed cases that it's a more severe type of flu, particularly with respiratory uh, consequences. And we know from overseas that the uh, more severe edge of it is having quite dramatic respiratory problems. Uh, obviously, as there's more cases in Australia, we're more likely to get a sense of the spectrum. But to date, we certainly have had mostly mild cases. Um, and I think that the public should be reassured that in most instances, it will be comparable to other flus. We just need to be careful that for some particularly vulnerable people, it can actually be very severe and, and quite dangerous. But, but unlike other countries, as Health Minister, you're, you're suggesting that we shouldn't be anticipating deaths in Australia. Australia from this flu, at least at the moment? Uh, well, I think it's really impossible to say. We've seen a fairly small number of countries that have had deaths, but we are over 80 uh, worldwide, and we know that there are some particularly vulnerable groups, people who already have respiratory problems, uh, pregnant women, and we know this is a disease primarily of young people. Mm. That's why the actions we've taken in relation to schools have been uh, quite strong and why we're now asking people who have travelled or been in contact with uh, others who have swine flu to not be at school for seven days to try to reduce the likelihood of the disease being passed on before anybody's showing any symptoms. And I'm, I'm very pleased that we continue to have good cooperation from the public to do this when it does cause some inconvenience. Minister Roxon, did New South Wales authorities act appropriately and correctly when they allowed passengers from on board the Pacific Dawn to disperse? Was that the right thing to do? Well, I think this was a very difficult situation. I understand that there are some questions being asked and some level of frustration that perhaps people should have been held while more tests were being done. Uh, we have to try to have a proportionate response and holding 2,000 people or trying to put them in some sort of other isolated circumstances would have its own difficulties. Uh, and the advice that we have so far is for us not to restrict internal travel in any way. In fact, our advice uh, and the international advice is not to close borders or restrict travel. They don't believe this disease can be uh, prevented from passing through the community in that way. So we're trying to move our efforts to testing, making sure that when we have confirmed cases, we can act quickly to deal with the contacts, to isolate people who have confirmed cases and try to reduce the number of people who get swine flu and, of course, have an impact on the severity of it by using antivirals early in the process. So I think that... Uh, authorities are making decisions in difficult circumstances and trying to balance the uh, inconvenience to the public that might be regarded as disproportionate for what so far has been a mild disease with the need for us to try to isolate cases and make sure that there isn't any unnecessary spread. And that is a difficult balance. In every instance, it won't 
be perfect, but I'm very confident that the states and territories have been doing a very good job. They've been working closely with us. We're trying to ensure that there are, is a nationally consistent approach. Uh, so if people are moving onwards that are known cases, we ensure that the jurisdiction they're moving to has all those details mm-hmm. and is able to confine them. That, that's the sort of uh, area where we need to be putting more effort. And as there's more cases, that will obviously be a growing logistical challenge. And Minister, just finally, how far along are we now in developing a vaccine? Uh, Well, as I understand it, there are now uh, researchers and scientists around the world who are very close to be able to uh, producing the the first test run. So we need to be able to produce the vaccine. They then need to be able to test its effectiveness. Uh, My latest advice is we are still several months from having a vaccine, but we certainly Uh, Our researchers are moving into the next phase. I've seen CSL in the media saying that they would be able to start their production next week of their test vaccines. Uh, But it is a complicated process and it still will be several months down the track. It's why every week that we can delay this disease spreading more widely in the community is buying us more time when we'll have this disease but a vaccine also to treat it. Nicola Roxon, thank you for joining us today. It's a pleasure.